Time now for the markets with Layton. And Layton, you say it's uh, about a week away from the monthly supply to demand reports? It is almost, and the market expects the USDA to increase the forecast size of the U.S. corn crop once again, so that report on the 10th could be a market mover, as we say. In the headlines this week, a slight surprise in last Tuesday's grain stocks report. A long-running cotton dispute with Brazil is close to ending. As a quarterly pork report indicates, there's more hog supply than the trade expected to see. The month of September ended with the release of the U.S. Grain Stocks Report back on Tuesday. Analyst Daryl Good says the numbers added to the supply pressure for corn and wheat. The slight surprise I mentioned earlier in the segment is that U.S. soybean stocks were smaller than expected. However, Good says that change for beans provided little price support in the markets. The Financial Times Online reports that the U.S. and Brazil agreed on Wednesday of this week to resolve a decade-long feud over some cotton subsidies. Extension Ag economist John Michael Riley joined me on Thursday morning to discuss this and other developments pertaining to the U.S. cotton market. John Michael, Thursday morning, we got a new export sales report for cotton. What did that look like? Current exports are down, but we are seeing a pickup in, in future sales, which is good, but also surprising given the, the fact that we have seen so much strength uh, accumulate in the for the U.S. dollar, which of course makes our goods more expensive to our friends overseas. So the fact that we do see see more sales for, for future deliveries is, is a bit surprising, but not surprising there is the fact that exports are down, and I think that's really what's been moving the market here lately, is this dollar move as well as the, the expected decline in exports. And from what I could see Thursday morning, the market didn't really respond, uh, definitely not positive to that export news. Well, I think the response has really been in the days prior leading up to today's report just because of the fact that we have seen such strength in the dollar and such you know, other world news is to kind of take a precedent, putting, putting the pressure on it, and, and that's largely reflected today as, as the non-response. Would you think uh, December futures are going to be able to kind of hold in the $61 range uh, with this continued pressure that it's under? Uh, that's the million dollar question, right? <laughs> I, 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 you know, given everything that we, we know right now, uh, there is a lot of support there. Um, I'm not much of a technical type of guy, but I do think that uh, the market is, is looking at everything that's available right now and it's in trading in that range is, is not, is, should, should continue given every, as long as everything holds. Uh, but, you know, obviously we're looking at what could be a big crop here. We saw some adjustments last, uh, last month to the uh, supply and demand report. We're going to get a report here next week on that. So a lot of that were, the market's moving its attention to that report uh, as, we, as we speak more than likely. Now also some news Wednesday this week we had uh, word that this uh, long dispute between the U.S. and Brazil over cotton subsidies that was going to be settled is that likely to move the market or have any impact really? I think everything there is, is so the, 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 that story has is, is really very, lost, very lost some old. of the headline <laughs> but it is I think more than anything it's just uh, a relief to get it off the books and, and, and move, be able to move past that and know that we're not going to be under the cloud of this WTO case. And final question, I know a week ago China kind of uh, hit the market hard with a hammer when uh, they were clamping down on imports. Uh, what's the rationale behind that? I think it just has a lot to do with the fact that China's sitting on so many inventories and, and they're trying to know if they can do what they can to relieve those. Uh, definitely put some pressure on the market and, and continues to, that's, the lot, that's largely what, what moved it. Our trivia quiz this week recognizes the just concluded National Farm Safety and Health Week. Here's a quiz question for you. What age group has the highest risk of injury on a farm? Now, the, which two of these four choices are the answer? Is it A, age 15 and under, B, age 25 to 40, C, age 40 to 60, and D, age 65 and over? I'll tell you at the end of the markets. We turn to livestock now in the markets. There's more pork supply in the pipeline than the market anticipated. This is one headline out of the new quarterly hogs and pigs report. Analyst Elaine Cubs says the numbers definitely have bearish implications for hog prices in the summer and fall of 2015. They said the hog inventory is down 1%, and that's less, it's not as far down as the, the analysts were expecting it to be before the report. So the idea is that there's actually a little more supply of hog inventory than people were expecting, so that's bearish. The herd has not been expanding. It didn't immediately respond to the cheaper grain. It sort of waited until now to start rebuilding that breeding herd. It's been very slow compared to when the cheap grain was. It feels like the hog producer just had a lot of uncertainty. Certainly with the PED virus last summer, there was a lot of uncertainty. And, and now there's 
I don't think much uncertainty that we're going to have cheap grain available for the foreseeable future. Before our feature story, let's check the trivia answer for this week. The correct choices, again, there were two, are A and D. OSHA says entry rates on the farm are highest for children age 15 and under and adults age 65 and over.